In this video, we will be talking about the last days. Why is that important? That's because in Daniel chapter 2 verse 27, when Daniel was about to interpret the dream, he told King Nebuchadnezzar in verse 28, There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. So the question is, what are the latter days? This is what we will be exploring. Throughout the book of Daniel, there are constant references to the time element, terms like latter days, latter time, appointed time, the time of the end, the end, and the end of days. These terms all refer to the last days, many of which actually refer to the last of the last days. In other words, the final days of the last days. So what exactly are the last days? Are we living in the last days? The answer is yes. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. It says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. God speaks to us in these last days through His Son Jesus Christ. This means that we are right now living in a period of time known as the last days. The last days begin at the first coming of Christ and ends at the second coming of Christ. Jesus marks the beginning and the end of the last days. In His first coming, He spoke thus to the people, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus, the very word made manifest in the flesh, was literally speaking to the people. And now, God continues to speak to us in these last days through our Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. There is a prophecy found in the book of Joel which begin to find fulfillment in the book of Acts. We read this in Acts chapter 2 verse 17 to 21. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my manservants and on my maidservants I will pour out my Spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Note how it speaks of the mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit that began then on the day of Pentecost and continues to be outpoured today. But more than that, it also speaks about the sun turning into darkness, the moon into blood, referring to the great and awesome day of the Lord. In other words, the second coming of Christ. This shows us that that which took place on the day of Pentecost occurred during the last days, thus confirming that we are indeed living in the last days and will last until Jesus returns. The last days is also known as the present evil age. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 says, Who gave himself, that is Jesus, for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. When Jesus returns, this present age is brought to an end, and we shall enter into what we call the Kingdom Age, which will last for 1,000 years. It is also known as the Millennium Kingdom. Beyond that, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7 tells us that in eternity's future, there are ages to come. Let's review. The last days begin at the first coming of Christ and ends at the second coming of Christ. Knowing that we are living in the last days, we may ask, where in the last days are we? Jesus told us that we are to discern the signs of the time. In fact, we are to be like the sons of Issachar, to understand the times and to know what we ought to do. When the disciples came to Jesus and asked Him the sign of His coming and of the end of the age, Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, 
For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. When we look at what is happening around the world, we understand that we are at the close of the last days, nearing the three and a half years of great tribulation that is yet to come. This great tribulation precedes the second coming. Let's now look at how the last days are characterized. Number one, in the last days, God speaks to us through His Son, Jesus. Number two, in the last days, God pours out His Spirit upon all flesh. Number three, in the last days, God is building His house. Number four, in the last days, nations will flow to the mountain of the Lord's house. Number five, scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts. And number six, in the last days, many will depart from the faith. To get the most out of these statements, please refer to the scripture verses. The last days are days of great contrast. We find that there are two streams running concurrently, that of darkness and that of light. This began in Genesis and continues right through to Revelation. This is seen in the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 and I will put enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Indeed, the wicked will become more wicked, and the righteous will become more righteous. Though there may be darkness covering the earth, yet the church is arising and shining brighter and brighter. Although many will depart from the faith, and scoffers will come in in the last days, yet Jesus is building and establishing His perfect, blameless, spotless, without wrinkled church. Therefore, let's never lose sight of the great light, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the great work He is doing through His church in the midst of darkness. In the next video, we will be looking at the interpretation of the great image dream which King Nebuchadnezzar saw and how it relates to our time.